Um, so we'll have some labs, some hands-on, and some uh, instruction too. If you need to do the restroom, like we said, the restroom is down the hall. Um, we'll definitely take breaks, like drinks, donuts in the back. Um, probably looking about four hours or so when we do this. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Scott. Any questions before I turn it over to Scott? Hey, I silence all phones, please. I know we got Leila Lua. Are you guys from Iolani? Manoa. 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 Taycom. Okay, I know we got some mentors and some students here next year. So there's supposed to be some other schools here who may show up late. All right, Scott. All right. Good morning. Scott Atta. Uh, I'm here in this portion of the today's training. Did everybody grab a CD from the back real quick? If you didn't, go grab one. Uh, there's some resources and some of the files we're going to be using for some of the exercises. What is this autorun.in? Okay, so everybody's got a laptop or a desktop. You need to log onto the desktop with user credentials to get on there. And if you need Wi Fi access, top level with that. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, uh, real quick, what uh, I'm going to cover uh, in this section, uh, kind of go over some of the uh, background on me, uh, talk about some of the training goals we got for today. Uh, we'll go over defining the difference between decryption and uh, encryption and encoding. Uh, we'll look at some of the types of encoding that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, and then we'll break for a hands-on. You guys can break up into groups or whatever. But there's a bunch of files uh, that we'll kind of do a practice run on. Uh, then we'll reconvene. We'll go over some types of encryption that you guys might see. On, and we'll do another hands-on exercise with that. Okay, so a little about me, uh, I'm Scott Atta. I got a, I graduated from the University of Manoa, my electrical engineering in 2004, if I remember that part of that. Uh, after I graduated, uh, I did four years of uh, research and development uh, for a private company here. I uh, worked on uh, DoD contracts, uh, primarily the ETC Hawkeye, that's a big plain pancake on it. Uh, so I did a, my, my function over there was I was doing the computer control design uh, for some of those units. Um, after I left that company, I started working for the DOD, uh, working up at uh, Camp Smith. You guys know what that is, uh, doing network defense there. Uh, so I've been doing that for the last four years. Uh, just recently, I moved up to Wahewa. Um, I was tasked with standing up a new C&D team out there. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, just some certifications. Uh, Nothing special. <laughs> uh, so overall, six years in the computer field. Um, while I was actually working in the R&D company, um, that's how I kind of broke into this field. Uh, it was a small company, so everyone had you know three or four different jobs. Uh, so most of my other jobs was they had a you know DoD classified computer that they were using to you know, look at information on. So I was the manager for that, and also the overall security manager for the corporate network. So that's kind of how I broke into the field. Uh, also. I kind of have a stand-up company uh, I'm trying to build up here to do consulting work and uh, training. Anybody have questions for me personally? <laughs> right. Okay, so some of the goals for today. Uh, just kind of get you guys familiar with the different types of encryption and encoding uh, that you guys may see throughout the competition. Uh, introduce some of the basic techniques uh, they use to decode and decrypt them. Uh, and what we're gonna what you guys are gonna see is Part of the, I guess, the key, I would, I would say, to decoding and decrypting is figuring out what they use to do the encryption or decoding, uh, encoding with, right? So, kind of a little bit of uh, techniques on how to figure that out, right? Okay, so let's define encoding versus encryption. Does anybody, you guys kind of know what that is? or? <laughs> so basically, I kind of boiled it down. It, it's, I, I grabbed this off uh, some website that kind of defined it in simple terms. So encoding, basically, you're, you're just changing data from one form to another, right? And I think the basic thing you should take away from this is that how they do it is not necessarily a secret, right? If you know what method they use to encode it, it's very simple to decode it, right? So that, that's not too big of a deal. Encryption, that's when you start getting a little bit more secure, right? There's actually a key involved in encryption, right? So there's some algorithm. The algorithm that they use to do the encryption is generally publicly known, right? So even if I told you what that algorithm was, it wouldn't matter to you if you didn't have the key, right? So that's kind of how, in my head, I separate the two, is the encryption requires a key and coding does not, right? Any questions on that? Right. So different kinds of encoding schemes. So here's some of the kind of the common ones. I mean, there's many, many more, but 
I kind of tried to pick out the ones that you possibly could see on the competition. Um, you know, the more complex they get, the more the more time it takes for you to decode them, right? So, understanding the constraints of the competition, they can't be too hard. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be here forever. All right, so kind of uh, base 64. Um, a lot of these, the first, the top two, I mean, it's kind of just conversions between different forms of that data, right? I mean, it, it's how it's represented. I've got a table for you later on, and we'll see that. Um, reverse order, that's kind of a real easy one, right? They just turn the word around and you can see that a lot. Um, the rest of them are kind of, I'm not sure that you may see these, but if there's, there are also types of encoding I just want you to see, to see the possibilities, right? Because when you guys get your challenges, you don't really know what you're going to get, so just kind of open your mind. There's other things here, and you guys may need to do research on that to figure out what exactly it is. But you got Morse code, um, Leap, I'm sure everybody knows what that is. Um, you got binary coded decimal, which is a four bit encoding. Uh, UU encoding. This one I threw up there, I, I think we saw it when we did some Cyber Olympic challenges. I don't know that you guys can get thrown that, just it's a little more complex. Uh, and then after this waveform encoding, I highly doubt you will see that, but just in case, uh, it's a, a type of encoding that you guys can see. Uh, Alright, All right, so let's start off with base 64. Okay, so I guess what I want you guys to get out of all these encoding schemes, right, is again, going back to you need to know and be able to figure out what they encoded it with before you can even start the dec decoding process, right? So some of these encoding schemes will have kind of telltale signs. Um, this one in particular has the double the equal, equal padding and or single equal. Um, one thing to note though is it may not have it, so that's kind of why I put this example here at the bottom. Um, so basically it's representing binary data in kind of an ASCII string format. Right? Um, and the way they're doing it is, so you're going to have some you know, ones and zeros, right? And instead of converting it to a letter, which is usually taking out you know, eight, eight bits of that, they're going to convert it and take you know, six, and they're going to convert it to some other asking string. Right? So you can kind of, I guess, they, they use this a lot when, they, when they're storing things on media, when, when the type of storage or the, the, the uh, method of transmission only supports like text-based type of uh, data input, right? So that's kind of when they do the base 64 and the coding. Um, we saw a lot of this uh, in our challenge files as well. Uh, usually they'll throw the equal and the double equal on, on whatever they're giving you, so it's pretty easy to pick out. So if you see that, that's right away, base 64, right? Um, also very easy to break, uh, uh, I guess I didn't cover it, but there's some online tools and on the resource and in your uh, hands-on exercises. There's a couple of bookmarks that I put in there and some links to do an online basis for decoding. Uh, most of the encoding and encryption, all online tools, right? So you don't have to actually do any of these manually. There's, there's usually a tool somewhere that you can use. Okay, so, uh, so ASCII, uh, X, ASCII, Decimal, and EBC, DIC. Uh, it's basically almost all the same type of uh, encoding scheme. They're usually very interchangeable. Uh, hexadecimal uses a base 16. Basically, are you guys familiar with base, I guess, values? So your normal one, you know, zero through nine, that's base 10, right? So you have 10, 10 distinct values. Base 16 has 16, right? So they actually throw an A through F in there, right? So your binary representation of that is gonna be 16. Okay, uh, so decimal is base 10, that's the one everyone's familiar with, you know, you count one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's see. So your ASCII, your ASCII um, cable, that's your, your normal text, right? So the, the English language, it's usually based on the English language, they've extended it where it covers standard you know, language characters and such, but for the most part, that's gonna be your, your plain text files, right? It's all ASCII encoded. Um, and, and it'll be a lot clearer when I show the table right after this. Uh, and then if they did binary encoding, I don't know that you'll see this, you may, I think you may saw one on some of the test files. So you may see this, which is why I wanted to include it as well. But it's very similar to the way they encode this. It's just grabbing a different bunch of bits and, and representing it that way, right? So, so here's a sample table. It's not the whole table. Um, I think the link on the bottom will take you to the full table. Um, but kind of gives you an idea, right? So you have your decimal values, your hex values, right? So if you wanted to convert a capital O, right? You have a binary value that the computer understands, but you can also represent it in you know the different formats, right? So you may get something encoded or you know encoded with, with one of these formats. You just need to. Understand that. Um, for hex, I'm not sure that they'll 
put it in that way in the, in the challenge, but generally it's preceded with a 0x, and it x or 0h, right? So you guys see that in other forms, uh, that's, that's what that is. But on the challenges, they probably will just throw them all together and figure out. But a uh, good telltale sign for this, uh, at least for hexadecimal, right, is if you see characters in the string that you know, never exceed you know, uh, f, <laughs> there's numbers in there, probably a good sign that it's hexadecimal. You should probably try that. Okay. Uh, also, uh, if you notice, so if they're going to convert, right, so whatever the challenge is, it's going to be using some string you're trying to decode, right? So if you look, any of the letters, will generally line up with these weird characters, right? So that's another telltale sign that you know, it's EBCDIC encrypted or encoded, uh, these are strange things. So kind of just good, keep this table in mind, the basic letter scheme, that's generally what you're going to see in conversion-wise. Right. Any questions on this so far? All right, so again, we'll cover this one. Uh, reverse, right, it's pretty simple. Uh, main thing I want to, I put this up here, it's so simple that it doesn't really need an explanation of how to decrypt, uh, decode it. But I did want to put a note in there that sometimes a visual inspection of the ciphertext is actually all you need to figure out what it is, right? I mean, it's, you look at that and it's, it's pretty simple. So just keep that in mind, sometimes you don't need a tool. Okay, so here we go, uh, Morse code, I guess, everybody know Morse code? Or know at least of it? Right, so it's basically a bunch of dots and dashes, right? So think of it as on, off, and it can be you know any number of things, lights, plates, sounds, whatever. Um, but it's basically just you know, a table, it's a matrix and a key. And <laughs> so you may see, we saw this, I don't know if you guys saw this in the practice one, right? But we, we saw this during Cyber Olympics, they had one of the strings put with dashes and dots on it. That's, again, where the visual inspection is the best when you're going to look at that and like, oh, Morse code, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, it's pretty straightforward as well. Okay, so uh, Lee, Lee speak. I, you guys all seen this before? I assume you've seen this before. Um, they're basically, it's basically an alternative alphabet language. I mean, they, they've replaced some of the standard, you know, characters. Maybe they use combinations of characters to replace them completely. Um, you know, you can Google this one. People, I've seen you know different people use different characters for the same word. So, in that sense, it gets a little bit strange. But for the most part, you know, I think most people have seen this before. And if not, you can definitely Google search. This also has many, many tools online that will kind of decipher this for you. Um, what I did notice when we were doing our challenge too is sometimes, you know, because there's so many variations, the tools you find may not decipher the whole thing, right? But if it gets close enough, you can usually just figure out the rest. Okay, so binary coded decimal. Uh, this one's a little strange. I don't know, did you, you guys saw this one, right? On the test file? Okay. Uh, I don't know how geeky you guys are. Have you guys ever seen that clock that's just a bunch of LED lights? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, that's what that is. That's binary, uh, binary coded decimal. So they basically take four uh, four bits, right, lights or whatever it is. It can also be eight, but generally it's four. And what they're doing is they're just representing a single digit in basically binary format, right? So uh, I don't know if you guys are you guys familiar with how to read binary over a quick thing. So four bits in binary, right? You got four stations, they all have a place value, right? So the first one is one, two, four, and eight, right? So the way you figure out what that number is, you just add them up. So whatever's on, so if the greens are on, right, that's one. Here it's two, right? So if you get three, you put two of them on, right? So on and so forth. So they generally don't, uh, you know, they don't usually pass nine uh, that I've seen. Uh, if they go to eight bits, they make, but in, even in the four bit, they usually stick with up to nine. So you're, basic uh, hand character. The reason I say you probably won't see this is because it's going to be very hard for them to represent some kind of an ASCII character in this method, right? What would more likely happen is they, you'd probably decode a string of numbers, which you then have to do one more uh, round of uh, encoding or decoding to get the ASCII string. So probably not going to be like this, but just so you guys are aware that you know, this is another way of encoding stuff. 
Okay, so UU encoding. Um, this one we saw in the Cyber Olympics challenge. Uh, it was kind of weird, but the very telltale sign is you cannot directly decode this, right? You need actually a utility to do this, right? But the file will always begin with this, right? So it looks like a program is basically what it's going to look like. It's going to say begin, it's going to have some mode, um, and the file name, and it's going to start the ciphertext from that, right? And then it usually end with the end. So if you see this, I, I did include a link that's uh, an online UU decode utility, so you don't have to install it. But uh, I think Unix or Linux will generally have this pretty built in. But in case you're looking at a Windows box, there is a website that will do this for you. Just copy the whole thing, including the header, header portion, and it'll decode it for you. <coughs> Alright, so this is the last one that we're now. So this is kind of, again, it's kind of another one, kind of like the BCD, right, where you're not really going to get your text output right after the first round of decoding. Um, this comes into play, I mean, this is kind of more my world from the engineering side, right? This is waveform, so think of it like your electrical signal on, on the circuit board, right? It's on, off, 5 volts, 0 volts. Uh, that all translates into ones and zeros for the computer, right? Which now you're kind of back to you know, bits and bytes, right? And you can go to the for the, uh, for the example, I just put, you know, this is conversion into hex, right? So you can take two hexadecimal bytes, or you can go straight to decimal, and this is the ASCII application of that waveform, right? So again, probably won't see this because it requires you know, two rounds of decoding in order for you to get actual text out of this. But just in case you guys have seen it, and so and, and it's not just waveform encoding, right? I mean, this could be all kinds of stuff. Right? I mean, you name it. Just be aware that there's different ways to encode, and if you don't see something that kind of jumps out at you, you probably need to do a little bit of research. All right, so. At this point, we'll kind of take a break with we'll the handle. So on the on the disks that you guys got, uh, I think there's two folders. One, I don't know what they're called. One is practice files, and the other one might I think it may be called hands-on hands-on XS files. Uh, in those two folders, there's a bunch of files that are called decode me. There's some that say decrypt me, so we're not going to work on those. But the decode me files, those are the ones I want you guys to kind of go through and uh, see, you know you get some new groups or whatever, but. Um, Utilize some of the online resources in the bookmark folder and see if you guys can go ahead and figure those out. Some of them are really simple, some of them are a little more complex. Um, give you guys some time to work on that. And we'll walk around and help you guys if you guys need it. Alright? Break for that. Oh, and this is the, I don't know if I put this bookmark in there, but this is the bookmark for the UU decoder. 